Uh, so hello, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. In this talk, uh, I would like to uh, tell you how to create a recommender system uh, using machine learning based on the data uh, about how uh, your customers are browsing throughout your website. So at first, a uh, little bit about me. Uh, I graduated uh, from Slovak University of Technology and I did my research uh, in recommender systems, especially those used uh, in education. Uh, I did a collaboration with edX, which is uh, one of the uh, leading online uh, courses provider. Uh, uh, except research, uh, I'm also open source contributor to this course, uh, which is an open source discussion platform. And I also spent Google Summer of Code with them. Uh, also, I uh, co-founded project Spine Hero and uh, I participated in many uh, different competitions with it. And the project is now open sourced. And uh, now I'm working as an AI engineer at Exponia. So uh, what will I tell you today? Uh, at first, uh, a bit about motivation for recommender systems, then uh, some uh, uh, challenges we have encountered building recommender system for e-commerce, and then uh, I will dig deeper into text-based recommenders and product uh, embeddings. So uh, we are living in the era of information overload. Do you know how many of the 130 million books? Uh, do you know what to read next or what is the best uh, book for you to read? Or do you know what uh, will be your next summer hit out of 35 million songs that is available at Spotify? Uh, yeah, that's a lot of data, a uh, lot of uh, uh, things to consider by us and we are overloaded. Uh, there, uh, there is a recommender system that can help us. Recommender system provides suggestions to user for items that might be interested to consume or item meetings their need or uh, meeting, meeting their preferences. Or more formally, it's uh, uh, some machine learning model that automatically tries to predict how user will like a particular item. Uh, what data we can use for uh, recommender systems? Uh, Usually it is uh, data about how your customers are browsing through your website, what is the flow, uh, or what is their flow. Or uh, we might uh, use uh, data about uh, their ratings, likes, or reviews. And based on that, we can compute some similarities between uh, users or between items. So our recommendations are everywhere. There are uh, some businesses that uh, the core of their businesses is based on recommendations uh, like Netflix or Spotify, but also LinkedIn or Steam. So what are we doing uh, at Exponia? Exponia is experienced uh, cloud and one part of, of it is also recommendations as a service. And uh, many of our clients are from uh, yeah, e-commerce and from different domains like fashion, travel or telco. And that's uh, why it's uh, very challenging to build uh, uh, good recommendations for them because what works in one domain might not work in another domain. And why those businesses are interested in uh, recommendations? Um, because they would like to maximize their business value. Yeah, that's very natural. And also they would like to sell more diverse items or uh, sell new items on stock. And also personalization by recommendation uh, increased customer experience, their loyalty and satisfaction. So uh, for example, for Netflix, the value of recommendation is uh, very high because 80% uh, of our stream at Netflix come from recommendations and that's a lot. So having good recommendation is uh, critical. For YouTube, it's uh, also very important because 60% of video clicks are from homepage recommendations. So recommendations are influencing uh, all of the users. So uh, but the recommender uh, systems domain is a very well-known research topic. So uh, why not to use collaborative filtering, which is uh, a state-of-the-art approach based on users' past behavior. It's working like on the image when uh, we are uh, similar. Uh, two users are similar because they, they've seen similar items. Uh, then I can recommend you, uh, or the similar uh, user can recommend uh, you the item you did not see. Simple. But we have encountered uh, many challenges uh, with that. 
because usually customers are not logging while browsing uh, your website. There are, there are no history available for them. Also, you have many new customers, uh, many new users. You don't know anything about them. And for collaborative filtering, uh, usually uh, metrics of uh, users and products uh, or items uh, is used. Uh, but this uh, metric is very sparse because um, only uh, part of the user seen some uh, products and the other are zero. So for example, typical case is 99% of this matrix is zero values. And how can model learn something from only 1% of uh, non-zero values? So that's one problem. And also in e-commerce, uh, buying intent uh, and preferences of user might change from visit to visit. For example, uh, when I came to uh, some uh, shopping website, at first maybe I would like to buy some clothes, but uh, on my second visit, visit, when I have clothes, maybe I'm interested in a gaming console, and then next week uh, I would like to buy a present uh, for a birthday party uh, for my friend. So it's also another, another completely different intent. So how we tackle these uh, challenges? At first, we try content-based recommendation. Uh, it's based on analyzing uh, content of the, of the products. Uh, in our case, it was analyzing uh, text. So it was text analysis. So for example, for this book, uh, we might analyze the description uh, of the book, uh, the author, or mm, the reviews. And the idea is to uh, somehow project each product into some, uh, some space. Uh, like that, and then compute similarities between, between them. So as you can see, uh, the more similar books are close to each, uh, closer to each other than the uh, like Hobbit and uh, Fellowship of the Ring are more close to each other than the other book. So that's the idea. But at first, we need to do some text processing to work with text. There is a great library, uh, NLTK in Python. So uh, for, uh, at first, we might uh, remove subwords, which are words without any meaning. And then uh, we might use the send uh, tokenize, which uh, tokenize our sentences into, and split it into words. And then we also might apply part of speech tagging, which uh, tell us uh, uh, what is, uh, which a word is uh, noun, which is verb, uh, which is adjective, and we can also filter by it. So this is basic uh, text processing. And then uh, we must uh, somehow uh, compute the, the vector uh, in, the, in the space. So very basic approach is to, based on the, uh, the, some document, to uh, create uh, the vector by simply Mm, counting number of, of occurrences of some word. And uh, uh, this vector is uh, usually very, mm, very uh, high, or the, the size is very large, because uh, our vo uh, vocabulary or our words in our documents, there are many words in our documents, so it's usually tens of uh, thousands of uh, words. So the vector is also very uh, large and mm, also sparse in this case when we have uh, such short text like this. So what's the problem with this uh, uh, approach? We are only comparing exact words in documents and we are also ignoring uh, order of the words. We are just taking into account the words but not their order. But, uh, and what about synonyms and related words? We are also not taking into account so we can do better. Uh, we might use the idea of word, em word embeddings, which, uh, which are based on uh, hypo this hypothesis that you shall know a word by the company it keeps. Uh, it's saying that when uh, two words are typically used in one sentence or one paragraph, uh, they are somehow related. And the uh, uh, word embeddings can capture a similarity between words, analogies, and general syntactic and semantical information. So also some form of uh, synonyms. And what's great, that it's uh, unsupervised learning. We, you don't need any labeled uh, training examples, just your corpus of uh, documents uh, with a lot of text. And then uh, you, might, uh, you, you, got, uh, you get a representation of each, uh, each word as a numerical vector. It's called embedding. And it's uh, usually uh, not sparse, it's dense. 
and this size is usually 100 to 300, so you can do uh, the operations with the vectors right, really, really fast. So uh, in this example, you have two uh, similar words like food and eat, and uh, you can see that uh, uh, the embedding or the vector is more similar than the word uh, laptop, which is uh, from, from different contexts. So that's the idea. And how can we build this, that uh, embeddings? Uh, the most common approach is, uh, is called word to vec uh, It was uh, proposed by Mikolo, 2013. And it, the, the idea is to use a neural network. And we uh, take into account sequence of, wo of words in a sentence. So for example, in, in this case on the left, we take into account five words. And we are trying to predict the center word based on the surrounding words. And that's the input. So that's, that's the idea. And uh, you have a large number of documents, large number of text, and you can apply this neural network in an unsupervised way. But yeah, uh, it's, very, it's very easy to use in Python because of the library GenSim, which is a, a great tool for uh, NLP uh, processing. So uh, in this code, you can see that we have uh, some reviews, uh, which are already split by, into words, and then uh, we input it into word to a class, specify uh, SG on uh, the architecture of which neural network to use. There are two kind of architectures. Specify number of iteration, how many times uh, go through your text, uh, through all of your texts, and uh, also the size of the resulting vector. You might play with that uh, argument. And a window, how many uh, uh, words to take into account uh, um, when processing uh, the text. So it, in the previous example, it was five. It's the five also in here. And when the model and mean count is uh, just for filtering out unpopular words. And when the model is trained based on all of the data in unsupervised way, uh, then we can uh, try to output uh, what is the word vector for word impressed. And you can see that this uh, just some uh, real uh, numbers and uh, yeah, 100 real numbers. And that's the word embedding that capture some semantic uh, similarity. Uh, yeah, but uh, let's try uh, an example because uh, that's, that's the best way how to do it. Uh, I downloaded the Yelp Open dataset, which is uh, just reviews of the businesses. Uh, so uh, I take into account uh, reviews for restaurants. It was nearly 4 million uh, reviews for restaurants. And I can show you what the model trained. Uh, here you can see how the embeddings looks like in uh, 3D space. This uh, 100, uh, not, yeah, it's not possible to uh, see it in a 100 space, so this is uh, 3D space. And when uh, you type some word related to food, because we train it on a restaurant data set, for example, pizza, uh, we can see that the word pizza is somewhere there. So we can just take a look at the most uh, similar value, uh, words for pizza. And here you can see it uh, on, the, on the right side. It's sorted by their, their similarity. So for example, you can see that the model learned different kinds of pizza, like calzone, uh, different uh, words related, like delivery, because yeah, pizza is usually delivered, uh, and so on. Or we can try some, some other uh, word, like I like beer, so maybe beer. And here. Yeah. Here we can see that beer, you have local beers, draft beers, Belgian beers, which are uh, the words in, uh, used in the same context. So the model is, labor, uh, model is able to learn it from the, just the corpus of the text. Or in other examples, for example, for word pasta, uh, the model is able to uh, just uh, learn what are different kinds of pastas b based on the reviews. Or for API hour, it uh, learns what is the abbreviation for API hour, uh, it's HH, or what, uh, what are the common days for API hours. 
or you can do, you can do some uh, addition and subtraction. For example, yeah, for the restaurant reviews, uh, the model learns that uh, breakfast and lunch is brunch, uh, yeah, which uh, is quite good, and uh, wines uh, minus French plus Belgian is beers, and that's uh, yeah just from the corpus of documents. So uh, you can train your uh, embeddings by yourself, like I did, or mm, you could uh, download uh, from, from the internet, for example, trained on the Google News dataset, or uh, trained on the whole Wikipedia for different languages. But uh, yeah, we have word embeddings, which can uh, work uh, great with text. It's also able to capture synonyms, words used in the same context. Uh, we can find, based on that, we can find similar products to a product. But when somebody is, uh, when some customers are reviewing on the same product, they could recommend it the, the same items because the same items are related to the product. So it's not very uh, personalized. Uh, yeah, can we can we do better with uh, with this uh, with this idea? Uh, so uh, the next step for us was to uh, try uh, product embeddings. And the idea is the same, but uh, we try to represent each product as a, as a vector, not word, but each product. Uh, so uh, we uh, would like to somehow uh, train or learn uh, that products in, in similar contexts to have similar vectors. For example, for this green sweater to have uh, this, uh, this value or this vector. And then we can uh, compute the similarities based on the, based on the products. So for product uh, on the top, we can compute the similarity with the, with the below. And um, yeah, the, they are very similar. Maybe uh, also the price is similar and so on. So the similarity is 82%. And then we can also uh, use it like when customer in this session, we don't know nothing about customer, and customer comes to, to our website and uh, views these three products, we can combine or average their vectors, their embeddings, and then based on that, we can uh, compute the similarity to all, uh, all of uh, uh, other uh, products in our catalog, for example. And then we can retrieve the top, uh, top best uh, similar items and retrieve it to, to, to a user. So that's the idea. And uh, because of the vector is so, so small, it's not only like 100 uh, real numbers, we can do it uh, like really fast and in real time. But how to train, uh, train it or learn the embeddings for products? Um, yeah, uh, we might use uh, the, uh, the data of uh, sessions, like uh, what were the customer sessions. Uh, so for example, uh, customer A come to a website and visited uh, these three products on the top uh, with these ID, uh, IDs. It's one sequence uh, for training. Then another customer come uh, to a website and visit these three products uh, in, uh, in a sequence. And these are the uh, IDs. So it's just a sequence of uh, item views in a session sorted by uh, customer and uh, ordered in time. And use the same idea uh, of uh, neural network to uh, learn it on the, on the sequence of views. And then uh, when we explore the model, uh, uh, now we know that, uh, or we detected that uh, the products are somehow clustered for example, uh, the model was able to, uh, to learn which products are for men and which are for women, or which are more formal and which are more uh, casual, based on the position in the space. Uh, so uh, it somehow clustered the products, and we can also do the similarities. Like, for example, the image on the top is the query, and uh, the other images are the results for, for this query. So we might see that the dresses are somehow uh, similar and overalls also are somehow similar. Another example is these shoes. Uh, this, the shoes on the left is, is, the, is on the query. And we might see that uh, the model uh, outputs 
uh, other red shoes in the same style or uh, different colors of the same shoes. And moreover, uh, it was able to depict uh, some uh, complementary items like sunglasses or sweater that fits uh, the, the style with uh, this, for this shoe. Uh, for more items in the session, when customer visit uh, the shoes and also the t-shirt, uh, we might get another shoes and also sweater, uh, bag, and some bracelets uh, that somehow also fits the fashion style of a, of a, of a user. For uh, dresses, the model was uh, yeah, able to output uh, other dresses, which are also very visually similar. Uh, and also some item which is back, which might suit to this dress. So yeah, it's, uh, it's very interesting, uh, just based on how customer, uh, based on uh, customer sessions. And for the running shoes, uh, yeah, the output is also different brands of the shoes. Uh, some, some are the same color and uh, yeah, it's uh, somehow, somehow similar. Uh, okay, so that, that were the examples. Uh, but uh, if, uh, if you would like to tune it uh, and to get the best accuracy uh, as possible, uh, you might uh, also uh, be careful about filtering out short clicks, which might uh, be bad for your model. And uh, the models are doing uh, some sampling of, of negative uh, or negative examples. And it is better to not do it on a, uh, randomly, but uh, for example, for products from different cut, uh, from the same category. And uh, there was a research paper which compared uh, this approach to some sam uh, simple collaborative filtering and it achieved better accuracy. So it's very par powerful and can be used uh, in production uh, and uh, it, got, it has mm, good uh, results. So to sum up, uh, yeah, uh, it, it was, uh, I presented you the recommendation using product embeddings, uh, which, was, uh, yeah, which can be computed uh, real time and it utilizes uh, session data about how customers browse through a website, uh, and then we can represent each product as a just a vector, and we can and in, in the vector there is somehow decoded encoded the price, the color, uh, fashion style, and we can do everything in real time, mm, just the computation of uh, vectors. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, feel free to contact me, and I will be also in the uh, booth after the presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your talk. We have some questions, quite a lot of questions. So the first is, uh, have you worked with uh, precisions, or, uh, oh, sorry, have you worked with predictions of time series? Can you recommend some resources or tools? So predictions of time, time series. Uh, uh, yeah, in Exponia, uh, we also work with, with prediction. We, for example, predict what are the uh, next uh, item or next product that customer will buy or whether will customer buy something. Uh, so yeah, we are working on predictions um, and time series, but uh, uh, to recommend you some tools, uh, I, I think uh, just uh, scikit-learn and uh, SciPy is a good way to start, and um, I don't know nothing, not, not, nothing uh, better than, than that uh, for time series. Okay, thanks. Uh, have you tried uh, lematization and stemming? Uh, if yes, uh, what was the overall impact? So stemming uh, mostly, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, uh, of course. Uh, for the the first uh, content-based model, we did stemming. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, we tried stemming, but uh, we did not compare it with lemmatization. But for uh, languages like uh, Czech uh, and Slovak, lemmatization should be, of course, better because it's uh, based on uh, dictionary. So, but we did not compare it. But uh, if you're working with Slovak language, then go with for, for lemmatization. Yeah, thanks. Uh, what is, in your opinion, uh, the area in which uh, it is the most complicated to get the good recommendations for users? So. 
the most difficult area. I know like colors of cars are difficult perhaps. <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah, uh, each domain is, is different. Mm, I don't know what uh, can be the mo most difficult, but I think that our problem is very difficult in, in Exponia because yeah, our clients are dif different domains uh, and you need somehow to be good in all of the domains without uh, needing to just tune your model for, for that domain and that domain. So I think like more general uh, recommender system that can be used as a service. That's very challenging for me personally. Okay. Thanks. Uh, have you, uh, in order to come up with a similarity measure between objects, uh, you need to define a distance. Have you tried uh, different ones, different distance measure, uh, si similarity mm, measures? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I think uh, custom similarity is a good way to start, but we did not uh, try different ones. It's possible. Mm, we yeah, we experimented with Euclid, Euclidean, but uh, the results are yeah, not that different. So mm. yeah, you can probably discuss that later. You two together. Uh, what is the typical dimension of the embedding? Uh, is free enough? Uh, probably three is not enough uh, as you as you will as you will see when you will experiment with the model uh, the typical is uh, 100 to 300 uh, but it yeah, is a trade off between uh, how uh, how large it is for storing because you don't need to you would would like you don't want to store uh, just 10000 uh, uh, elements so it's a trade-off between the size and the accuracy. So you need to um, somehow experiment it with it uh, and find a good accuracy with still low size. For us, work the best uh, uh, around 200. Okay, thanks. Uh, so uh, one more question and uh, one more question. One important thing: there will be a quiz here. And there is a quite high probability that you will win something on it. So, and now, like the last question, uh, what technology do you use uh, to uh, search based on vector cos cosine uh, similarity? Uh, as I, as I uh, presented uh, the GenSim library, it, it can do, uh, yeah, you can do it with uh, GenSim, like out of the box. So, for example, use this. Yeah, okay, thanks. Any other questions? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.